you know, for so long, your mother was kind of like the gatekeeper of your identity. She possessed this knowledge about your origin story and she protected you from that story. Yeah. Good intentions, but you didn't have the, the missing piece of that puzzle. Right. And you experienced most of your childhood in a kind of a state of confusion. And then once you get that missing piece, you get to be in control of your identity and you say, all right, now I embark on my journey yeah. and, I'm, and I'm gonna figure out who I am and I'm gonna define what that means for me. What would you say for you now at this stage after, after all of those years, all of that study, all of those experiences like with the Black Panthers and so forth, for you, what does it mean to be a black woman? The thing that I get the most excited about is being in a position where I am now, I'm 48 and I am so excited to be 48, to have gone through um, teens and 20s and gathered this information along the way. And looking now, the thing that I think that makes life so worth living is your mindset, right? And, and what I chose, Carol Dweck wrote that amazing book, Growth Mindset, right? And what I chose is to believe that we could change and evolve and, 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 and grow and not be confined to whatever belief system that maybe we were holding even last week or, you know, the, the belief system that maybe your family holds for you and, and, or your community. And so being able to evolve and change and grow and being a, a black woman who has embraced entrepreneurship for as many challenges as that that brings um, and not having not having really great role models. I didn't grow up um, really embracing entrepreneurship and understanding what that meant. But I get excited because there are opportunities now that young black students, chiropractic students, I get a chance to talk with them um, at times and being able to inspire them that you're gonna reach for something, it might as well be shoot for the fences, like go all the way because you never know what it is that you're gonna be able to create and accomplish in your life. And for me, just having that growth mindset, being committed to being a better version of myself. Um, I think I told you earlier, the thing that I appreciated is what you had spoke about before about those non-zero days. Mm -hmm. um, Far too many of those happened for me early on, um, after I became a mom, and, and that was the thing that I wanted to do with my whole heart was to focus on just being a mom. And when, after three kids, got a house, husband, all of these things, and there's this innate drive that won't go away, that I can't quench it by the successes of watching my family grow. And the thing that I knew that I wanted to do was just pursue something that was bigger than what I, my vision, what I could see currently. And although it was terrifying, just the idea of being able to rely on that courage and step forward, forward and at 36 saying, okay, I want to do this other thing and not feel that mom guilt or the shame that if I choose this, if I choose to go back to school, if I choose to reinvent myself, then that means that I'm not choosing to focus 100% on my kids' development and watching them. And as a mom, it was a pretty difficult um, space to be in. I, I think that I'm extremely blessed. My parents were phenomenal. My mom ended up marrying when I was um, in third grade to a phenomenal man. I always called him dad because he did the job. Um, and so I had a really great role model. So the idea then that I was gonna choose something um, for myself and to go back to school, that sacrifice of what I knew that my family would have to give up would be pretty tremendous. And I was not, I wasn't a hundred percent courageous. Like I sort of dabbled my toes in a few classes um, and then a few more. And then when I finally made the leap and said, okay, I'm going to graduate school, 
and this is what it's going uh, to look like. The thing that I think that makes us unique is the ability to be able to define our own story for ourselves. Mm. So, so two things. Um, I, I love, love that last statement. You know, when I when I think about what it means to be black for me, I think I think of it as something that has two components. There's a historical component, and then there's an evolutionary component. The historical component is this is the tradition in which I am rooted. This is the story of where I have come from and what we have been through. And then the evolutionary component is this is the power that I have to contribute to that tradition in order to make it something that's bigger than the past. And so there's a certain sort of power that comes with self-knowledge that says, I take pride in who I am and in my history, but I am not held hostage by my history. I contribute to my history. I continue to add to history. So not only is my blackness something that I came to this earth already with, but it's also something that I get to add to. So the moment I do something, that becomes part of what it means to be black. So if black people aren't interested in neurology, well, they are now because I'm interested right. in neurology. Right. If black people don't do baseball or hockey, well, they do now because right. I'm interested in those things that we get to have a say. And so I love how your story captures that philosophy in that there's this big theme of I get to define who I am. I'm not held hostage by anybody's understanding of me. 